So what do we get from forests? So when we're talking about that, what, what is it that the forest provides? Why do we care about the forest? So um, we're, there's five areas we're going to kind of say are the main areas in terms of what we get from from forests. The first one is forest products because that's the easiest one for people to think about. So the idea of lumber, um, two by fours, four by fours, four by eights, plywood, oriented strand board, pallets, um, cardboard, toilet paper, uh, wooden toys, uh, any sort of paper, any paper, pencils, all that stuff. That's all we're going to just deem as part of forest products. Uh, clean air and water, um, and we'll kind of talk about this, but the idea that the, that the trees are actually um, purifying the air and helping keep the water pure um, as, they're, as they're there in the forest. Recreation, the idea of just being out to get in, being able to get out into nature and enjoy nature, uh, habitat for our wildlife, and then aesthetics, just the overall beauty of the forest and the overall um, enjoyment of being out in nature. Those are our five main categories, five main things that we get from the forest. So let's kind of go over each one of those. So I gave you a few examples, but here is a uh, much more defined list of uh, things that we get from the forest. Uh, the one thing, probably my um, most interesting thing for me on this list, could be all sorts of, uh, you guys can see it a different way, but the idea of maple syrup. Maple syrup is converted from the um, sap from maple trees. And so I just think that that's, that's something that people don't think about as a forest product, but it's definitely something that comes from the forest. It comes from uh, maple trees in Canada and uh, the New England area of the United States. So um, clean water is another example. And so um, it's a good time to talk about a uh, watershed. And we're going to have a... Um, section specific to watershed management that we'll go into later in the semester. But a watershed is an area of land that catches rainfall and other precipitation, like snow melt or fog, and channels it into a marsh, stream, river, lake, or groundwater. Channels it to one single point. So we're talking about an area that catches all the rainfall, all the snow melt, and it's going to channel all that water to one single point. And that's going to, um, some of that water is going to go in to the ground and become part of the aquifer, which is where um, groundwater is stored. Some of it's going to flow to streams and um, lakes. Some of it's just going to run off and some of it's going to work its way all the way back to the ocean. Um, these areas are going to be critical for fish, uh, for ha critical habitat for fish and wildlife. Um, but the idea is that, that throughout this process, throughout the process of, uh, the water moving from, from the atmosphere and down onto the ground and then into the rivers and the lakes and the stream, it's going through the forest and the forest is actually filtering that water. Even when it's in the ground, that water is getting filtered and getting clean so that we actually have uh, clean water. So it's really important to understand that the forest actually has a role in the water um, that, we, that we have available to us. So here's an idea, a picture, just to give you an idea. So right here you see your watershed divide or your boundary to this watershed. And so any water that falls within this area here, it's all going to flow to one single point. And in this example, this would be that one single point. Is there water that's going to be stored here? Absolutely. Is there water that's going to be stored in this uh, tributary up here? Absolutely. But eventually, all of that water makes its way down to one single point. Even the groundwater, rainwater gets into our groundwater flow, but makes it to our one single point. Clean air. So the air 
that we that we breathe is actually purified by the force. So the way that that happens is that uh, our atmosphere has carbon dioxide in it or CO2. And CO2 is what is uh, needed for plants to do photosynthesis. So plants will take uh, sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide, and they'll give off oxygen, which we need to breathe, and sugar, which the tree and the other, um, um, which the tree, the soils, plants, grasses all need in order to grow. And so when you think about it that way, that is crucial to the way that the environment works on this planet. The idea that these trees take carbon dioxide. Now the grasses and the shrubs are doing it too, um, but these trees take in carbon dioxide and then give off oxygen. Now the reason I make a big deal about it is are there more blades of grass than there are trees in the world? 100%. But the trees are so much bigger and they can produce so much more oxygen than those blades of grass. Um, fun fact for me, hopefully for you someday, there are more trees on this planet than there are stars in the galaxy. Not in the universe. The universe is a huge place. But in the Milky Way galaxy, there's actually more trees on this planet than there are stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Wildlife habitat is provided by the forest, which um, I'm a big... I'm a big believer in wildlife. I'm a big believer in um, the idea of the wild animals of this planet and what they do for the ecosystem and the role that they have in the ecosystem and the beauty of these creatures and um, their overall um, role in the environment and, and all the different niches that they fill. As, to me, it's just, it makes the world such an amazing place. So, Wildlife habitat being provided by the forest is, is a crucial part of it. Recreation. So this is Yellowstone. Uh, uh, sorry, Yellowstone. This is Yosemite, uh, specifically the Yosemite Valley, uh, and um, specifically the idea of looking at uh, El Capitan and Half Dome uh, from Tunnel View. It's a, it's a rendering of that, of that view. And, um, yet Yosemite is one of those places that is, it's like within three hours from right here. And it's one of the most beautiful places on the planet. And the idea that forests provide us these breathtaking places where we can go outside and get exercise and, just be in nature and um, be able to take pictures and be able to hike around and be able to swim in the water and all of that is just it's amazing um, that that is a, an opportunity that we get and then the last thing is the idea of aesthetics the idea of just the beauty of these areas of the of the forest lands the uh, the idea that, that you can just be out in nature and feel it and hear it and see it and have it be such a vibrant thing that um, that can make you happy or can make you feel different ways or can give you a relaxing feeling. Uh, it's just the idea that you can be out there and have uh, an enjoyable experience. That's what, um, that's what it's B2B when something is aesthetically pleasing, you have that enjoyable experience just by being in it. And so that kind of, um, if we want to summarize uh, what the forest gives to us, that's there's a terminology for that called ecosystem services. So this picture down below here. The idea that we have air to breathe, the idea that we can look at a beautiful landscape, the idea that we can also eat berries and mushrooms, the idea that we have clean water, the idea that we have forest products, the idea that we have productive soil and we've got biomass, so we've got trees that we can cut down, and the idea that there's wildlife out here. That all falls into this idea of ecosystem services. And basically, um, how does the environment benefit us? And if we were to put a dollar amount to it how can we actually um, 
account for how much the environment actually does for us, doing things like providing us drinking water, providing us natural gas and oil, providing us climate regu regulation and decomposition and water purification and recreation and aesthetics and all that. Um, so people have tried to, to uh, classify this as ecosystem services and come up uh, with a number. So in 2009, the um, value of the ecosystem services was estimated at $149.6 trillion for the entire world. And that's trillion with a T, bigger than billion, bigger than million. And so it, it's a huge amount that, that nature provides for us in terms of ecosystem services and um, forest products are definitely, uh, or sorry, forestry overall is definitely a huge part of that. Forest products being one of the ecosystem services. Just another infographic to just kind of um, paint that same picture. Uh, a couple other things that we haven't talked about. Flood prevention with uh, riparian areas bordering, um, bordering uh, water. And then uh, pollinators. Bees live in the forest. Um, and the idea of, of pollinating all of our plants and being able to um, have fruits and vegetables, extremely important fishing. Uh, a lot of fishing happens in, in these uh, freshwater areas, which are usually within forests. So in terms of studying forestry and studying um, all these different effects that the ecosystem has, that all falls under the idea of forest ecology, which is um, another one of the lectures that uh, we have coming up in the semester. So. Um, Ecology is uh, the study of, of an organism and its environment, or another way to say that is uh, interactions between members of a community. And so forest ecology is interactions between members of a forest community or how the forest relates to its environment. And so how the forest grows, responds, and interacts with its environment. And so this infographic kind of shows you all the different things that will be um, a part of forest ecology. The idea of building soil, the idea of slowing water to protect soil, the idea of storing water, the idea of cleaning water, of helping flowers become fruit through pollinators and the web of life and the wildlife habitat and all of the associated processes where... Um, the roots are pulling up minerals from the soil and the tree is giving off water into the soil. It's all, all of these different um, pieces are all part of forest ecology, but also just one part of forest ecology. There's much more to it. Uh, nutrient cycling is a big part of forest ecology. The idea that um, you've got your food chain or food web and the idea of how uh, how you've got your producers, the trees, the grass, the shrubs, all taking energy from the sun and then turning that into oxygen and uh, sugar, sugar in the form of uh, leaves and um, other materials that then get ate um, by the consumers. And then the consumers are ate by predators. Um, and then uh, those... Uh, dead animals or the dead leaves or um, dead branches, um, whatever else, then gets decomposed by the decomposers. And then that eventually works its way and becomes soil. And then that process just keeps going. And so it's all part of nutrient cycling, all part of the idea of understanding forest ecology and how the forest works and really helps emphasize the idea that all of these things are all interrelated. They all work together. They're not, they have to all work in some sort of congruence to really uh, keep that ecosystem functioning. So hopefully in your head you're saying, well, okay, so you just explained forest ecology. That's how the forest functions and keeps itself going and how this whole cycle works. So then why do we have forestry and why do we have foresters? 
And that's because we need to manage these areas. And why do we need to manage these areas? Because obviously the forest knows how to take care of itself. It does, except now humans have interjected themselves into the equations and humans have decided to be the top of the food chain and decide to live in all sorts of different places and decide they need it. They need the forest and they need the natural gas and the oil and the, and the wildlife and all these different things that the forest offers. And so how then do we basically manage the needs of the people while also managing the needs of the ecosystem? That's where forestry and foresters come in. So um, we're going to have a whole section on silviculture as well. Silviculture being the art and science of controlling the establishment, growth, composition, health, and quality of forests to meet the diverse needs and values of landowners and society on a sustainable basis. Uh, just like the definition before, if you like the long version, that's great. I also like to simplify things and make it a little bit easier to understand. We just talked about forest ecology, and that's how the forest takes care of itself. And that's it's the that interaction between the forest and its environment. Silviculture, for us, is just applied forest ecology. It's figuring out a way to understand how the forest works within its environment, understanding the impact of humans now on that forest environment, and just being able to manage it uh, the best way we can for humans to get what they need while also making sure that the forest and nature uh, is not um, not ruined and not um, not taken to a place where it becomes uh, non-functional. It's got nature has to function in order for us to be able to get the products and the uh, clean air and water and recreation and aesthetics and wildlife habitat that we want. And so what we're doing in silviculture in trying to manage the forest is just being able to apply our knowledge of forest ecology and then being able to figure out how can we use that to meet the needs of landowners and society. Uh, just to give you an example of silviculture, so um, there's a couple different uh, silviculture um, strategies that we look at. So there's uneven age, where the trees are of um, more than three age classes. So you can see in this picture up here, we have really tall trees, so older trees. We've got a middle level of trees where there's they've, they've been around for a while. And then we've got some little trees that are just starting up. And so it's the idea that we can see a lot of different age classes. Now that's one way to manage. You can manage with two age classes. So right here we've got this older age class all here and then another age class coming through. So when we decide to cut down these trees, these trees will then take their place. Or you can just have even age management. All the trees are all the same. They all grow up, you cut them all down, and then you start all over again lots of different ways to do it. In this situation up here, the uneven age management, um, usually you're going to have a different method of logging the tree. So you'd probably go with more of a selection method where I'm going to take this tree and I'm going to take this tree this time around and then I'm going to leave the rest of it. Whereas this two age, when the trees are harvestable, I'm going to take all of these trees and then all of these trees will grow up. And in this even age, I'm going to take all of these trees, I'm going to plant a bunch of trees, and then those will come up. Just different ways to, to manage the forest and look at it depending on different goals. And in the silviculture section, we'll kind of talk about um, what those different goals are and uh, how you would go about it. So this is kind of a basic uh, silvicultural cycle for a clear cut. So um, you, you start off with a mature stand of trees you cut all of them, you then plant and manage the site, you get your trees to get established, and then you tend them, make sure that they come up, become a mature stand again, and then you start the whole cycle over again. That's the cycle of uh, the civil cultural cycle that most people are um, comfortable with and uh, understand. But there's a few different ways to do it, and we'll talk about that. Uh, later on in the semester. Harvesting. So 
the important part of harvesting is that that's how we get to our forest products. So in this example here, we start off with a maple tree. That maple tree is turned into logs. Those logs then at the mill are turned into, um, into different uh, products. In this case, it looks like some sort of dimensional lumber that's then graded and resawed and then kiln dried, kiln dried. Then it's planed and finished, planed meaning it's kind of flattened out and all the edges are cleaned up is the finishing part. And then you end up with a finished product. In this case, it's a, it looks like a chest of drawers. But the idea that we can turn this tree into this product is, uh, is extremely important. And the harvesting part of forestry is uh, understanding how we can take this thing and being able to look at this and see this and being able to understand this whole process in between and how much this tree should be worth if this is what we're trying to get out of it at the end. So how are we all, how are we going to do this correctly? How are we going to do this in a way that is um, okay and that we know it's okay? We know we're not damaging the environment. We know we're not causing problems. We know we're not um, allowing the world to be destroyed and that's uh, we're, um, we're going to do it ethically and we're going to do it in a sustainable manner so sustainable forestry is conducting forest operations in a way that ensures continued forest productivity and health maintenance of wildlife habitat and maintains forest land area we don't want to have less area we don't want to have less wildlife habitat and we want to have our trees just as productive and healthy as if we weren't in there cutting down trees. And so we are going to accomplish that through silvicultural practices, along with policy, planning, stewardship, and management. Stewardship, uh, really to me, is where the ethical part of it comes in. The idea that we're going to, we are stewards of the land. We're the caretakers of the land. We're the ones who are in charge of making sure that the land is is usable and is maintained and is there to to really be treasured and really it's going to be used but it's going to be used in a way that makes sense so that it is always this um, this wonderful resource that we have So uh, one person that we're going to talk about, focus on a little bit when we get to the history and policy section is Gifford, Gifford Pinchot. Gifford Pinchot was the first chief of the Forest Service. He worked for Teddy Roosevelt, and um, he came up with this concept of the use of natural resources for the greatest good, for the greatest number, for the longest time. It's the concept of sustainability, and it's, it's one of the uh, first tenants of forestry, but it's something that has just become extremely important and something that is focused on with this idea of sustainable forestry. We want to use natural resources and we want to use it for the greatest good, for the greatest number of people, but we want to use it for the longest time. We don't want to ever run out of these things. We don't want to ever have the problems and have to think about, well, what do we use now because we've run out of this? That's not how it works. We want to use these natural resources for the greatest good, for as many people as we can, for the longest period of time that we can. So here's a little graphic uh, that talks about multiple use and sustained yield. Sustained yield, yield just meaning what you can get from the forest. So a sustained yield means we're going to try and take um, the maximum amount we can from the forest, but the maximum amount that we are not causing any problems to the forest. The wildlife, our little bird right there, is still going to be happy. These people who are uh, enjoying the recreation and walking by are going to be happy, but we're also felling enough trees that the young trees can then come up and grow up and be happy while also providing some forest products for, um, for people to use for their houses or their uh, writing or to wipe their butts. And then here, here through, through this whole cycle, you've got carbon as well. And the idea that 
um, decaying forests, cars, and these things are emitting are emitting carbon, but that um, forests themselves store carbon. They're actually by being in the ground, these trees are actually big, huge carbon sinks that hold on to carbon. And we want we want carbon in. We don't want a lot of carbon in the atmosphere. We want to have that carbon being held. And trees are extremely good at holding carbon and releasing oxygen, which is very healthy for us as human beings. So just trying to go back to this idea of why are trees important? They help us with our biodiversity. They help us with our air quality. They help improve our water quality. They provide, provide sustainable timber and fuel. They improve the soil health. They help to mitigate climate change. They can provide food and forest products and they create jobs for people. So it's extremely, forests are an extremely beneficial thing to this planet and to us as a society. Forests make our lives better every day. And doing it sustainably is important because we need to be able to keep these things. We know that the trees are cleaning the air we breathe. We know they're cleaning the water that we drink, the, to, the things that we need in life. They provide us food and provide us um, even medicine Can comes from some of the things that grow in the forest. They give us beautiful things to look at. They give us the roof over our head, they are extremely important to our livelihood. But there are some problems that we have in forestry right now. So some current issues, climate change, of course, being the biggest one. The idea that the planet is getting hotter and what happens if the planet gets hotter to these forests and to these different areas. Another huge problem is habitat loss and deforestation. The idea of just um, more people, more urban areas, less forested areas. Fragmentation uh, and loss of open space, wildland urban interface. So the idea that our forests then are getting um, broken up into sections. Now, that doesn't seem like probably a big deal, except when you start thinking about wildlife and um, them being able to go from um, the place where they sleep to the place where they get food, to the place where they get water, to the place where they breed their young. It starts to become a real problem. And then um, the other thing is with us creeping into the forested areas, that's really um, become problematic um, with trying to manage the forest, especially in terms of forest fires. And uh, we'll go into fire management uh, later into the semester as well, but it's really important that uh, we understand we actually live in a um, in a uh, ecosystem that needs disturbance, and that disturbance, especially here in California, is wildfire. And so, if we're not allowing fire to burn our areas, we're actually hurting our ecosystem, and we'll go into detail about that. Um, later in the class. Uh, some other uh, current issues, poor management, um, specifically when, when I'm talking about poor management, um, we have a huge problem with invasive species. So species coming from other areas and then taking over. And um, that becomes problematic because you have a lot of species that are adapted to certain areas. And when other species come over and take over that area, now it changes everything because maybe there were some species species of animals that were reliant on a certain plant, but now that plant's not available anymore. And if they don't want to eat um, the plant that's taken over, then they have to move to another area or they just die out. And so that will then really change um, how you manage an area. And then another one that's uh, hugely important, especially out here in the West, is the idea of water rights. Now, um, where you find water, you find trees and forests. And when we talk about history and policy, we'll really talk about how that's kind of how force, um, the idea of national force came to be. And so really understanding that um, a lot of water 
in this country it comes from areas protected by national forests or national parks means that um that the way water is dealt with and the the rights and who has the right to the water becomes really important and that's what we got in terms of an introduction to forestry so as always with uh these lectures uh if you have any questions on them if there was anything that didn't make sense please feel free to contact me and let me know and i'll try and clear it up for you but i hope you enjoyed it